The uh, National Legal Director for American Atheists is with us. He is Eric Husby. And for those of us who really, really, really get angry when Creflo Dollar and Joel, I've got a dentist, Austin, and all of these mega preachers in their palatial mansions and their lack of paying taxes on anything, sucking money out of the tax base that provides for the funding of schools in a given area, get away with it. And we go, damn it, what can we do? This is the guy that's going to tell us. Eric, get on over here and help us understand how we can make this work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sue him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I wish it was that simple. It uh, sometimes is, but um, if, uh, if that could solve every problem, uh, I would, my, my daughter's college would already be paid for and uh, I'd have no further problems in life. But unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated than just suing them all. Um, I don't know if the first frame is up. I'm a little bit uh, new to this system here. It says legal update. I think I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Ten Commandments in American law today. Um, and, but uh, essentially, it's also a legal update to give you an idea of what we're doing and what we're going to be doing uh, going forward. I am the new um, uh, National Legal Director for American Atheists, as the uh, in, uh, MC just noted. Uh, I replaced Edwin Kagan, uh, rest in peace, uh, last year after his untimely death. And um, this is my contact information. I'm based in Tampa. Anyone's allowed to contact me directly, or you can contact through American Atheists if you have any questions. Um, also, uh, a couple of my favorite quotes. To start out, uh, Dr. House, if we, uh, if we could rational reason with uh, religious people, we, there would be no religious people. And that would make all of our lives less, uh, uh, less difficult, and we wouldn't have to sue as many folks. Um, also, because the part of this talk is focused on the Ten Commandments, as George Carlin once said, the real reason we can't post Ten Commandments in, the, in a courthouse is because you can't post, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, and thou shalt not lie in a room full of uh, judges, lawyers, and politicians, because that constitutes a hostile work environment. <laughs> a little self-deprecating joke. Uh, <laughs> I'm offended by that. I'm offended by that. <laughs> um, first off, too, I want to, uh, or second off, I'd say, we, um, we do need your help. Uh, if you're concerned about uh, our rights, our liberties, the rights to equal treatment, that uh, if you favor equal treatment under the law, which I'm sure everyone does, then please support our legal effort and support the American atheists through as, as many donations and as much assistance as you can provide. It doesn't have to be monetary. Part of it can be serving as a plaintiff when, there's an, uh, uh, when you're aggrieved or when there's an issue concerning a Ten Commandments monument or a, uh, something going on in your town or city, prayers before government meetings and that sort of thing. Um, let's get involved, and uh, we do need individuals on the ground who uh, are willing to come forward and say, I've been wronged by this, and I'll put my name on a pleading and, in court along with American atheists and move forward. We have issues, as I'll also talk about momentarily, with what they call standing in court, and it almost always requires someone who's heavily interested in the, in the dispute uh, to be named as a uh, party plaintiff. So if you can't give money, uh, give your time and lend us your name. Um, one of the main things, uh, the themes that uh, I want to talk about was the uh, Ten Commandments and uh, U.S. law. Uh, this is a, one of the, an example of one of the monuments that goes up all over the country now. They're, they're cropping up like weeds. They're giant six-ton monuments um, financed often by the same groups, and uh, they get put conspicuously at the front doorsteps of courthouses and city halls around the country. And we are uh, hard at work trying to fight against this movement. And uh, we have several cases, which I'll get into and mention to you, uh, currently underway and several others planned uh, that um, will fight against this movement. Um, we, uh, these are the Ten Commandments. And I wanted to, uh, uh, not everybody knows them, especially uh, Christians who tend to want them posted everywhere. They, uh, they, they can, I think stats have shown they can name maybe 
two or three of them before they get confused. And uh, here uh, are the Ten Commandments. And we're often told that the Ten Commandments are, ba are the sole basis of U.S. law or one of the major influences of U.S. law in our founding fathers. And um, I think that uh, when confronted with this issue, when you're discussing this with other uh, folks, point out that um, we have a little something in the United States called the First Amendment. And that says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or pro abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, etc. And if we go back to the Ten Commandments and we uh, take a look at what is involved in the Ten Commandments, the, number one, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. It seems pretty much like an establishment of religion. Um, if, uh, if you're requiring legislating that someone would have to have a, would have to have a God or keep the Christian or Jewish God as the, as the only God, uh, that would be an establishment of religion, and that would go against the First Amendment. Secondly, thou shalt not make any graven images. A graven image, image is usually defined as either any image, any image of a person or likeness of any uh, animal or person, or it's softened up often, such as by the Catholic Church, to mean idols, things that are worshipped. Either way, if this was a founding principle of American law, it would be unconstitutional. You couldn't have such a rule or a law in the United States because we were founded as a secular country. Similarly, the third uh, commandment, thou shalt not take the, Lord of thy, Lord, the name of uh, the Lord thy God in vain, it's basically a speech code. First Amendment, how could this be a founding principle of the United States? And it's often uh, uh, presented as such. Um, that, uh, the, that the rules uh, and laws of this country were founded upon uh, the laws of Moses and the Ten Commandments, most recently by the state of Texas, which I'll also touch on a little bit later, but the state of Texas has included in their textbooks um, the reference that the, the, the founding of the United States and the Constitution was founded on the law of Moses. The law of Moses, Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments. How can a, uh, rules that directly violate the First Amendment of the United States Constitution be founding principles um, of, of the law? Similarly, um, remembering the Sabbath day and keeping that holy, we're not told which Sabbath day. Is it Friday for the Muslims, Saturday for, the, for Jewish folks? Is it Sunday for Christians? And why keep any Sabbath day holy? And is that a founding principle of, of, of the United States or of the Constitution? Of course it is not. But for some reason, I think we all know, the Ten Commandments are lorded over us as, a, uh, as one of the founding principles of this country. We can go through the remainder of the Ten Commandments and we see that none of them, with the sole exceptions potentially of killing and stealing, perhaps bearing false witness, would, be, uh, uh, would at least be good principles to follow. However, they, can't, they, can, they certainly do not convert the Ten Commandments into something that is a founding principle, a bedrock principle of the Constitution in the United States. So this is a, the reason I bring this up is that this is a, a principle that's raised in defense in every case that we have. Every case that we file regarding a Ten Commandments monument, regarding prayers in, in uh, uh, city council and state government meetings, regarding any issue of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, religion, church and state and free speech in the context of religion, we are told that this country is a Christian nation that is founded upon the Ten Commandments. And it is so blatant, uh, blatantly false when you compare the Ten Commandments to the basic principles of our Constitution. And I think it's important for everyone to understand that because it doesn't take an analysis of, of case law. It doesn't take uh, a law degree by any stretch of the imagination. One can simply take the Ten Commandments and compare it to the First Amendment and say seven or eight of these would be unconstitutional principles. And we need to, to push on that principle. And we've done that in our, in our cases um, where we've, where we've uh, argued to the court one by one how these, uh, co these uh, Ten Commandments are not founding principles of the United States. Um, I won't go through the rest of them because I don't have uh, enough time, but that's the main gist of, of the Ten Commandments uh, issue. 
Now, what this is and why this is important and things like understanding the relationship between the Ten Commandments and the Constitution are important is because we are in a battle, many battles, for liberty and equality in the context of, of our atheism and religion in general. These pictures here you'll see are uh, from Bradford County, uh, Florida, which shows one of the main victories of the last couple of years uh, that uh, American atheists have, uh, have won. And this, you'll see our, our leader, David Silverman, here on the right, and, um, and the plaintiff in the Bradford County lawsuit on the left, sitting on a monument that we obtained uh, for American atheists, sitting side by side, one of those six-ton monuments uh, at the county courthouse in Bradford County, Michigan. And that's the first time in American history that occurred. So uh, that's important for two reasons. One, we have two ways to win these types of cases. One is by having the, the Ten Commandments monument torn down, and uh, secondly, failing that, we can, uh, we can have our own multi-ton monument placed next to it and have quotes from, uh, from uh, Madeleine Murray O'Hare and other famous individuals, Thomas Jefferson, and folks that are rationalists rather than religious notions from the, uh, from the Bronze Age. And, uh, the, uh, an, uh, we won in Bradford County, and we're going to win in Levy County. Another six-ton monument is in Levy County, Florida, uh, which is uh, near Ocala. And uh, that we, are, we have been pursuing a, a monument of our own uh, in that, uh, in that uh, county uh, through the procedures provided by the, by the county. And we have not been successful. We have tried multiple times. We have tried to negotiate with the county attorneys over the course of months. It's, we've been stalled, and we're going to sue them. That should, you should be able to read about that in the papers in, in a matter of days. Um, currently, pending, we have American Atheists uh, versus Thompson et al. Uh, in the state of Oklahoma. This is an ongoing battle uh, over a, another six-ton Ten Commandments monument in front of the state capitol building in Oklahoma. Now, um, this case is, uh, is, is, is going on, although unfortunately we have to report that uh, we took a hit by losing a, a motion for summary judgment in that case, and the court uh, agreed to allow the uh, Ten Commandments monument to remain. Uh, we, we lost on that note, and also the American Civil Liberties Union, which had a uh, parallel case in state court. Ours was in federal court in Oklahoma. The ACLU had a case in state court. They also lost on a motion for summary judgment. They are currently up on appeal uh, and on their case, and our appeal is pending as well. We are not giving up. And we also have a plan to bring a separate action with a separate plaintiff. Um, one of the reasons this case uh, has been difficult is one of the reasons I mentioned earlier in, uh, in my talk, uh, that uh, we need people with standing to sue. And uh, we did bring the case with two, two named plaintiffs who were local in, uh, in Oklahoma City. But uh, th according to the court, that was insufficient. We didn't lose because we were wrong on the case. We lost because the plaintiffs didn't have enough uh, relationship with the Ten Commandments monument to be an interested party to sue. So anyone who's from Oklahoma City would like to talk to me afterwards, I'd like to talk to you too. And uh, we, can, uh, we do have additional plaintiffs ready to go for another lawsuit against the, uh, American Athe against the uh, uh, state of Oklahoma. And um, we're going to continue on a two-prong strategy in the appeals court and with a new case. Uh, there is also another six-ton monument in Dixie County, Florida. And that case is, uh, that monument uh, actually was subject to a suit by the ACLU a few years back. They, uh, they uh, prevailed on the suit, but then on appeal, there was a, um, a, 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 a sort of a half reversal on a technicality. It was sent back down to the, um, to, the district, to the trial court level, and then the ACLU withdrew their case. They backed out. They left the, the opinion of the uh, court intact, but it's of no real precedential force at this time, and so the monument remains, Dixie County has left the monument in place despite a district court uh, opinion stating that it, it's unconstitutional to be there. So we um, uh, had, a, had trouble at first locating someone in that county to bring the case, but we've now solved that issue. And 
this case is now ready to go forward as well. This is a big case uh, that we're working on as well. American Atheists versus the Internal Revenue Service. Now, thank you. If we could, if we could all agree that the suit would be to eliminate the Internal Revenue Service, I know my bank book would, would, thank every, would, would be very thankful, but we can't go that far. What we're really gonna try to challenge is what they call section 501c3 of the uh, Internal Revenue Code. You may be familiar with that code section in that it's uh, what gives tax exempt status to churches, religious organizations, and then certain other charitable and educational groups that can qualify. Now what's the problem with this? Uh, some may say, well, we don't like the churches being tax exempt, but lots of uh, other groups can be tax exempt as well. So what's the problem? Well, there's many problems, some of which in the, uh, in, in the new uh, IRS case that we're identifying is that there's an improper distinction being made between religious groups and churches on the one hand and uh, secular groups on the other hand, groups that may be for educational purposes, literary purposes, sports related purposes, charitable purposes in general. They have to jump through hoops. They have to pay filing fees, they have to file applications, they have to qualify under strict conditions as a, as a, as a charitable organization. But a church, if, uh, if you file as a church and claim to be a church or a religious organization, you don't have to do any of that. And you don't have to file annual information returns. You don't have to account for your finances. And you don't have to uh, essentially do anything that a secular group is required to do. It's a bit of an overbroad statement. The tax code is very long and there's uh, underlying regulations, but that's the basic gist of it. And we are going to, uh, that case that we've been working on now for uh, about a year, uh, building uh, our, uh, our, our case and our uh, plan of litigation because obviously taking, up, taking uh, uh, action against the IRS is not a small feat. They have uh, quite a legal team they can bring to bear and they're not going to cave in and give up um, uh, this uh, distinction because politically uh, religious groups and, uh, and uh, churches have a lot of clout behind them and a lot of political um, support and um, there's no way that, uh, that this uh, distinction, this discrimination will go down without a fight. So, uh, but key, uh, stay tuned and you'll see this case filed uh, w within the coming weeks. There's another case where that isn't quite as close to being filed, but uh, there we are looking into it. If you've all heard about the Texas textbook uh, controversy, the state of Texas has uh, uh, introduced new, I mentioned this before, introduced new uh, educational requirements and uh, changed their textbooks. Some of the main examples are that Moses is now an inspiration for the founding fathers. Uh, I, I don't think anybody would be able to uh, read Thomas Jefferson's writing and, and, uh, and think that he was uh, inspired by Moses. <laughs> uh, he, he, uh, that's, that much is true, and some of the, some of the other founding fathers certainly were not, uh, were not Christian and certainly not Jewish, so I don't know uh, where they get this, but they've attempted to, uh, the dominionist forces, I, I think, are behind most of it, and they are sure that Moses was the inspiration for Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Paine and Ben Franklin, etc. And what's, which is fine for them to believe, but they've now placed it in textbooks. Uh, they've replaced, actually, uh, literally, they took the name of Thomas Jefferson out of a, of a section of the textbooks regarding the Enlightenment and replaced it with John Calvin, the finer, founder of Calvinism, and, uh, which I think is now modern day, somebody correct me, Presbyterianism, is it? It's, uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a Protestant, an old-time old Protestant denomination, and Calvin was known for the hell and brimstone, hellfire and brimstone preaching, et cetera, uh, that um, obviously is a hallmark of the Age of Enlightenment. I say that with sarcasm. Um, and also, generally speaking, that the roots of, the, of democracy can be found in the Old Testament is, is what they're attempting to teach children and uh, creationist views in general. Now, why is this important? Texas is crazy, we all know it. Um, but the reason being is that their textbook, app, uh, their textbook, uh, uh, would you put it, standards, end up being the standards for the rest of the country as well because they, the publishers have to market so many books to Texas that they end up changing their textbooks nationwide. So it affects, it affects us all. 
and all of our children. And I certainly don't want my daughter, who I think is here. She was supposed to be here, but she's only two, so she may not have uh, uh, qualified. But if everybody could just intersperse the remaining few minutes of the talk with loud cheers and standing ovations, I think if they're right outside, that might help me out a little bit. The <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now I'm going to tell them I got an ovation, and, and my wife's not going to believe me. She's going to say, sure, sure. <laughs> See, uh, I'm no Christopher Hitchens. I'm more of a, a Sam Harris delivery kind of person without much inflection. So I'm sorry if I'm boring you all, but I can only do my best. And uh, the, uh, there are many other matters we have under review. This is what I want everybody to understand as we're going forward. We can't publish everything and, uh, and we can't take every single case. But we are actively reviewing matters, and our people from Alabama will be happy to hear this, uh, uh, pro the action regarding proposed monuments in Jackson and Baldwin counties. Uh, there's a cross in Huntsville, Alabama, and there's an issue uh, uh, regarding textbook disclaimers in Alabama as well, which we're, we're actively looking at. And uh, also our Georgia members will be happy to know we're looking at that uh, law that was passed last year concerning a Ten Commandments monument at the state capitol building there. Now, we're currently embroiled in the Oklahoma case, um, and so we're going to follow that upon the, uh, the, uh, as we go along with the Oklahoma case. But uh, uh, we are uh, looking hard at the Georgia issue, whether they put up a monument and, and, and what its context is. Context is all important with these Ten Commandments monuments. Now, what can you do um, to, to help us speak up? and don't take it anymore. And that's one of the things that, that, that I'd like to, you to keep form, first and foremost in your mind is be active, speak up, don't take it anymore. Go, and go to your, and I don't mean nationwide, you don't have to be on television, go to your local uh, town council meetings, your city council meetings, your county uh, commissioner meetings, if you have a county commission instead of a town council, find out how they work, go to the meetings, and when you see a Bible there, because they're, they're still all over the place. Bible's on the, on the desk. Uh, they're, they're doing prayers at the beginning of these meetings and exclusively one religion. Um, you can stand up and say, I, 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 don't, I don't agree with this, stop it. You can make a motion, please stop religious prayers. Um, ta you know, change your policy. Or at a minimum, if, you're not, if you don't have the, the nerve to stand up in front of people and proclaim your atheism and do, and do this in, in public, take notes, take pictures, and call us because we can take action for you when you have a situation. We can send letters, we can say we know you're doing this and, and it has achieved success and we have had folks voluntarily change their policies and at least become more egalitarian. If they're gonna have prayers, while we would like them to end the practice completely, if they're going to have uh, secular uh, groups permitted to be included, and if they're going to have a wide array so there's no endorsement of a particular ph philosophy or religion, we, 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 we are uh, in a way compelled to accept that, that sort of compromise. But um, you don't get that compromise without asking. And so speaking up and not taking it anymore locally is very important. And each little victory will stem the tide of this, this religious wave that's sweeping the country. And it is sweeping the country down to these small levels, every county, every city trying to, uh, every school board, uh, not every, but many, uh, trying to infect uh, the, their policies, procedures, and practices with religion at even a small level. And it's all designed to put little bricks in what will eventually be a big wall. And then you won't be able to say, you can't do this religious stuff because they'll point to a long traditional history of, of acceptance of religion. So don't accept it. Participate in your local governments, I covered that. Write your representatives. Feel free, write them emails and, or, uh, and, uh, and, and let them know. It's best, of course, to, to not sign petitions that are generic, but to send emails yourself in your own words. When you don't agree with something, don't support it. Uh, we can make Open Records Act requests and FOIA requests very easily, and you can do that yourselves, but if you need help doing it, um, you know, contact my office, contact American Atheists, and that's an easy step for us to take. And th the importance of making these requests is that you get the government to come clean early on what they're doing and how they're doing it. It's not just a, 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 it's not a mere procedural issue. You want, we, we, we want you to say, 
to ask for all the documents they have relating to the Ten Commandments monument or posting in their in your city council building. We want you to have uh, to ask them for all the documents related to their prayer in uh, prayer before city council meeting policies, because then you'll get the download early from them, or we can get that for you, and uh, and and use that to see well is this an even-handed policy? Is this an exclusively Christian policy? And how can we get them to change it, or we'll go ahead and sue them. Um, and are you willing to sue? This is the primary one. We have 30 seconds, and this is it. For the purposes of bringing lawsuits, we often get the question, well, why hasn't action been taken in this case right here or right there? Many times, not all the time, but many times it's because we don't have a plaintiff withstanding to sue. And we, you know, even when we think we have a plaintiff withstanding to sue, like in Oklahoma, the court will tell us, well, not quite good enough. You've got to get a better plaintiff. So we need good plaintiffs, folks that are willing to stand up and put their name to it. And unfortunately, and support us with your donations, and I think I'm over time. Um, am I over time? Yeah, okay. Over time. Well, uh, then the last bit, again, is, is support American atheists financially because these cases cost money, ungodly amounts of money. Many times we have to hire local counsel. Uh, and I don't even say that facetiously, ungodly amounts of money. <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, oftentimes we have to hire local uh, counsel that, um, that uh, it means we have additional attorneys hired separately that, will, that have to be paid to bring a case because none of us are licensed in a particular state. I'm licensed in several states and I have found other states where I can practice in uh, on an ad hoc, uh, pro hoc vice basis. Uh, but oftentimes you have to have an attorney locally to do these things, and, um, and that costs a lot of money. So if you have uh, the means, please support us. And I think that about uh, wraps it up. I can take a question if I have any time. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> because... I think I misunderstood how the clock was okay. working here. It seemed like I went down to zero and then... Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we, we can take a couple of questions. Sure. I think that'll work. Oh, boy. Okay. So, Eric, are you around this weekend? I am around till Are uh, you willing Monday to have afternoon. people talk to you after this? Thing? I am not only willing, but I uh, welcome yeah. it, relish it. A lot of questions. I'm going to randomly... Let's see. I see this gentleman here. Uh, I've been calling on y'all folks so much. Okay. Hi. So, uh, for atheists who see some sort of religious display in some place, do we have any sort of legal grievance or any legal ground to, say, make a lawsuit or file a complaint of some sort? The answer to that question is, in lawyerly fashion, it depends. And it depends on the following, but I'll tell you what it depends on. It depends on where, uh, what is the monument of and where is it and who put it there and who paid for it and what else is around it. That's about as the, the, the quickest summary I can give you. What you want to do is find out, find out, is it on government property? Is it on private property? If somebody puts a flag up with the Ten Commandments on it uh, on their own property, you pretty much don't have any, any right to tell them what they can, put, can and can't put up there. But if it's a government property, that's the first, first bell to look for. Which government entity is it? So find that out. Also, take some pictures around. What else is around it? Is it a Ten Commandments monument standing alone with a bright light shining on it on a hill with all roads leading up to it. You know, that's one extreme fact scenario. Another one might be, is it a little plaque in the back room in the back with 18 other documents next to it showing the code of Hammurabi and, you know, some, uh, some pagan code or this code, like a wide array? That's going to be another uh, example. And there's case law that guide us on, on that. So it does depend. But if you see a religious icon on government property, let me know. Let's see. I saw, the, well, come on to the front, because I don't see those hands back there anymore. We're going to go this gentleman here in the gray. Okay. Uh, the state of Arkansas just recently passed a law to allow for Ten Commandments to be erected on the state capitol grounds. I'm wondering if you're aware of that and what we might be able to do about it. Um, I'm sorry, what did this, I, I missed that part about what the state, the state of Arkansas are, yes. passed a law allowing the, the erection of a Ten Commandments monument on the state capitol grounds. They just did this. Oh, uh, I, I was not a, a personally aware of that one, but I would like, love it if, uh, if, 
that he can have my card and uh, <laughs> send me an email um, or contact directly the American Atheists uh, web, through their website. Um, you, but if you send, shoot me an email to remind me of it, uh, that w that's exactly what we're looking for, those kind of reports. Okay, super fast question. Last person, I'm going to go this lady in the red. Eric is wonderful, yay. <laughs> Thank you for being this, our Thank National you. Legal Director of American Atheists. Super my fast wife and question. Last Did one. they hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to mention that there is a Tennessee school district that includes on its webpage one of its beliefs that, quote, God gives meaning and purpose to life. It's a public school, and I wondered if that is legally inappropriate. That's a big problem on, it, uh, on first blush. I, I, again, um, I can give you my card as well and contact me. <laughs> just give me a stack. Uh, just give, give me a stack. stack. <laughs> and, uh, but again, it, these, normal, these contacts can normally be made through the American Atheist website, but also directly to, to my email on the card or ehusby at atheist.org. And it's not a case being referred to me. I'm not handing my card out for personal gain. It's for the organization, get, you know, refer, it'll go through them, and, and if the organization is going to be behind it, there'll be a named plaintiff as well as uh, perhaps yourself or whoever's interested. Also, the, uh, the main thing there is to get the details you know, of what's, what, why, why is this posting up there and what else is around it, and, uh, and, and we would start out with a letter to the school board demanding that they take it down, now, you know, hope, which hopefully they would do. Thank you so much, Eric. He's around. You can find him, and he will answer your questions. Thank you so much. So, okay.